Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to CDIC's 2022 annual public meeting. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. Bonjour à tous et bienvenue à l'Assemblée publique annuelle. Welcome de la... to the CDIC's 22 annual public meeting. Thank you very much for being present. Hello, my name is Marc Poutet. I'm the head of stakeholder relations and communications at CDIC. Our preparedness is key to protecting depositors. At, at the outset, I would like to acknowledge that CDIC's corporate headquarters rest on unceded Algonquid and Anishinaabe territory. As we are meeting virtually today, I would also like to further acknowledge that the indigenous peoples are the traditional stewards of the lands and waters where each of us attends our meeting this afternoon. Before we begin, there are a few housekeeping items, starting with the meeting platform. If you encounter any technical issue during the broadcast, click on the technical support button at the top right of your screen. Pour écouter les panelistes sans... To access floor audio, which is bilingual with no translation or interpretation, click the floor audio button on the bottom left below the widow window. Interpretation are offered on both the English and French feeds. To access sign language interpretation, click on the ASL or LSQ button. Please note that sign language will be visible on the English and French feeds only. You can submit questions for the Q&A portion of the event by typing them in the Ask a Question box on the right side of your screen. We will try to get all questions today. However, if we don't get the chance to answer your question during the meeting, we will post questions and answers on our website in both official language in the days following this event. During our discussion today, Leah Anderson, CDIC's President and CEO, will be joined by CDIC's Chair of the Board, Bob Sanderson, to discuss highlights in preparedness efforts, reinforcing trust in deposit insurance, and recent governance enhancements as CDIC navigates a complex and uncertain operating environment. We will also be sharing two short videos that illustrate CDIC's preparedness activities to support as well as demonstrate the importance of working with stakeholders to help achieve CDIC's preparedness objectives. Après leur allocution, Léa et Bob se feront plaisir. Following their remarks, Léa and Bob will be able to answer your questions. A recording of this event and the event speaking notes will be made available on our website in the days following this event. It's my pleasure to introduce Bob Sanderson, Chair of the Board of Directors of the CDIC for the past six years. Prior to joining the board, Bob served at the, as the Chair of the Canadian Association of Insolvency and Restructuring Professional. He also served as president of the Insolvency Institute of Canada and of the International Association of Restructuring, Insolvency, and Bankruptcy Professionals. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Ontario and of British Columbia. Bob was also an invaluable member of CDIC's advisory panel on resolution. On that, it's my pleasure to welcome Bob. Bob. Mark, thank you very much. On behalf of the board, I would like to welcome you to CDIC's annual public meeting and to thank you for joining us today. Merci et bienvenue. CDIC is a federal crown corporation that provides deposit insurance and is the resolution authority tasked with handling the failure of any of our members. In carrying out this role, we contribute to financial stability in Canada by protecting depositors against loss and ensuring access to their funds. Our members include banks, federally regulated credit unions, as well as loan and trust companies. Since it was created by Parliament in 1967, CDIC has handled 43 failures, affecting more than 2 million depositors. No one has ever lost a single dollar that is under CDIC protection. The Board of Directors is tasked with providing both leadership and stewardship. It holds CDIC management accountable for the performance of our corporate plan, as well as overseeing its effectiveness and performance in fulfilling its mandate. This oversight role is of fundamental importance, particularly in a rapidly changing world where our board must also focus on emerging risks and anticipate the challenges that CDIC could face. With this foremost in mind, CDIC is committed to a strong governance framework. 
In 2022, the board renewed its governance model with a new aspirational charter. This charter is driven by values and is founded on the principle that our job is to protect Canadian savings in a manner that can bear the closest scrutiny. Our oversights of and delegations to management are driven from the charter to help ensure that Canadians trust in CDIC is well placed. As our government governance model evolves, so does the composition of the board. In 2022, Parliament amended the CDIC Act to strengthen governance by including the CEO as a full board member. This measure ensures alignment with best practices and with the boards of other Crown corporations and financial institutions. The amendment also provides for an additional private sector director to the board's composition to maintain the balance between the public and private sector directors, ensuring the board has a diversity of views and perspective. Composition of the board has also changed over the past year. In addition to the superintendent of financial institutions, Peter Rutledge joining our ranks, deputy superintendent Ben Gully also joins the board, both as ex officio members. The board also welcomed three new alternate members, Carolyn Rogers of the Bank of Canada, Isabel Jacques of the Department of Finance, and Frank Lefarcano of the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada. The board and CDIC management benefit greatly from their expertise and insights. I would also like to take this opportunity to wish former director Jamie Hubbs best wishes as he embarks on his retirement from OSFI and to congratulate Sharon Kozicki as she undertakes new responsibility of the, at the Bank of Canada. The board composition will change again in the near future as we are actively in the recruitment process for director positions. CDIC and the board also continue to benefit from CEO and President Leah Anderson's leadership in these uncertain times. Canadians are well served by Leah and her team. They are dedicated, passionate professionals in delivering on CDIC's mandate. I would now like to invite Leah to share her perspectives on the past year and what she sees on the horizon. Leah, over to you. Good afternoon and thank you, Bob. Merci, Bob, et merci aux membres du conseil. Over the past year, risks in the environment and to CDIC's membership have evolved significantly. We've had a number of shocks, including the ongoing pandemic, the invasion of Ukraine, and we are seeing geopolitical fragmentation. We now have the highest inflation we've seen in decades, and many global commentators believe that the risks of a recession are rising. In Canada, higher interest rates are pushing borrowing costs up, decreasing affordability. The volume of deposits with our members has risen. This is driven by a range of factors, including the increased use of digital banking channels, volatility on asset markets, and higher interest rates. CDIC insured deposits increased some 5.5% to more than $1 trillion in 2022, on top of 6% growth in 2021. This growth highlights the importance to Canadians of their savings and the value that CDIC brings to Canadians by protecting their savings in these uncertain times. When Canadians know that their savings are safe, this supports the stability of the financial system. As we have for 55 years, CDIC remains steadfast in its mandate to protect depositors. And that is why, in today's risk environment, CDIC is focusing on three priorities. These are to be resolution ready, to reinforce trust in depositor protection, and to strengthen CDIC's organizational resilience. In keeping with today's theme of preparedness, I will focus particularly on our objective of being resolution ready in the unlikely event a member institution should fail. Our current state of readiness ramped up when the COVID-19 pandemic arrived in early 2020, and we've not let down our guard. Key to CDSC's preparedness is our early and continuous identification of risks that can materially impact one or more member institutions 
We are closely monitoring current and emerging risks faced by our members through risk assessments and stress testing to, to detect vulnerabilities at an early stage. At the same time, we work with our members to develop tailored plans that detail how we would resolve a potential crisis at or the failure of a troubled institution. These plans not only consider the impact on individual members, but also the system-wide impacts of a crisis. We also conduct internal simulations to ensure that we are ready to use our full resolution toolkit in a crisis. Our testing includes a range of simulated interventions, including reimbursing insured deposits and non-payout scenarios, as well as responses to system-wide stress. And we constantly adjust our testing program to match the evolving risk environment so that we're testing the right things. These simulations are not isolated to CDIC. They include our partners, like the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, the Department of Finance, the Bank of Canada, and the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, as well as member banks, securities regulators, and other stakeholders that would be involved in a potential failure scenario. CDIC's Simulation Center of Excellence is a cornerstone of our preparedness efforts, created to support CDIC's capability to resolve a troubled institution of any size at any time. I would now like to pause and introduce a video featuring our Center of Excellence leader, Nadine Serendine, who explains how we test our preparedness. CDIC's Crisis Simulation Center of Excellence is a team of professionals dedicated to designing and running simulations, tabletops, and fire drill exercises. Over the past few years, we have conducted 17 exercises. Most of those have been in-house or with our safety net partners. We are now expanding our reach to include other players within the financial ecosystem. CDS is uh, the intermediary between buyers and sellers in the Canadian marketplace. If you're an investor and you own shares in a public company, for you to acquire that shares, that transaction went through CDS. CDS plays a really critical role in the Canadian capital markets, and we are doing simulations on a regular basis. And that enables us to enhance, streamline our processes. And we are very much aligned in how CDIC is doing simulations as well. Every exercise is different, but typically it begins with us identifying a risk scenario or a tension area that we want to explore. And that's followed by weeks of preparation and design to develop a crisis experience that our people can really engage in and problem solve. They provide us a safe space to practice making decisions and making mistakes in a pretend world. Kind of like firefighters, we need to practice our skills and be ready to respond when called to duty and doing a simulation of all these parties, it enables everybody to look at their process and to know exactly what they have to do in case of a financial crisis. CDIC must be prepared to respond to a crisis at any time, and we need other key players to be prepared as well. Future collaborations ensure there is continuous improvement among players in a crisis to maintain financial stability. And this, of course, is for the benefit of all Canadians. Being ready also means having the necessary funding in place when needed. This year, we established a near-term target level for our Deposit Protection Fund, also known as our Ex-Ante Fund, to exceed 85 basis points of insured deposits by 2027. This target will guide CDIC's annual premium rate setting for our member institutions. CDIC will review the fund target level on a regular basis, at a minimum every five years. Last month, we also wrapped up a consultation with our members to modernize and improve the effectiveness of our differential premium system, or DPS. I'd like to thank the respondents for their very thoughtful input. The goal of the DPS is to ensure a strong, risk-based funding framework, which supports the sufficiency of the ex-ante fund. We'll share a summary of the feedback along with the timeline for implementing the changes in the coming months. 
Readiness also means working with financial sector participants on data sharing and testing to ensure that depositors would have quick access to their savings in the event of a failure. This supports depositor trust. An example of this approach is our work with nominee brokers who handle much of the nearly $325 billion in deposits held in trust at CDIC member institutions. Nominee brokers serve as trustees for deposits and their clients or beneficiaries. Voici une courte vidéo sur la collaboration entre la SADC. Here is a shorter video on the collaboration that takes place between the CDIC in light of these uh, deposits. Thank you. Quand le gouvernement du Canada a apporté des modifications à l'assurance dépôt qui ont particulièrement touché le secteur des courtiers fiduciaires, Nous avons constaté l'importance et la complexité de ces changements et nous avons compris qu'il serait difficile d'assurer une application uniforme des nouvelles règles. Je savais qu'il fallait qu'on travaille ensemble pour réussir à amener le tout et pouvoir aider nos clients à s'assurer que leur dépôt soit sécure. Nous avons donc créé un groupe consultatif qui est devenu un lieu où discuter des meilleures façons d'intégrer les nouvelles règles au processus du secteur. La collaboration, c'est vraiment les valeurs de la banque, euh, ainsi que l'agilité puis le pouvoir d'agir. Donc, euh, pour avoir un impact positif, qui est aussi dans l'ADN de la Banque nationale, il faut absolument qu'on travaille en tant qu'équipe dans l'industrie. Euh, ce que j'ai aussi très aimé avec la SADC, c'est l'ouverture. Euh, pouvoir avoir les discussions franches, et pouvoir vraiment voir les défis puis trouver des solutions ensemble afin de pouvoir finalement donner un impact positif à nos clients. Nous savons que le secteur financier évolue constamment et devient de plus en plus complexe. Alors, il est essentiel de continuer de collaborer avec les intervenants du secteur et mettre à profit l'expérience que nous avons acquise. Il faut qu'on demeure proactif pour protéger les dépôts des clients, donner un impact positif. La seule façon qu'on peut réussir à faire ça, c'est vraiment de garder la communication, de continuer de discuter, de faire du challenge effectif entre nous, entre l'industrie et la SADC, pour finalement, au bout de la ligne, toujours avoir le client en tête. Grâce à nos efforts, les personnes qui placent des dépôts auprès de nos institutions membres par l'entremise des courtiers fiduciaires ont l'assurance que leurs dépôts sont bien protégés. Being resolution ready, CDIC can effectively discharge its role as resolution authority. This builds confidence in the financial system and contributes to its stability. To bolster that confidence, CDIC must also keep pace with innovation and consumer expectations. That's why CDIC is improving the speed and convenience of access to insured funds in the rare event of a failure. Modernizing CDIC's reimbursement or payout process will rapidly get insured funds into the hands of depositors via digital payments. Our payout modernization project is already well advanced with key project milestones achieved. Being aware and monitoring the digitalization and transformation of financial services is also critical so that we can anticipate and respond to the new developments in the Canadian financial system. We work closely with our members and their partners to ensure that Canadians receive complete and accurate information disclosures about what is covered by CDIC deposit protection and what is not, like crypto assets. One of our partners, the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada, is also the leader of Financial Literacy Month, which runs throughout October, or sorry, which runs throughout November. The objective of this year's campaign is to help Canadians find the right balance in managing their money in a changing world to build their financial resilience. Knowing about deposit insurance and how CDIC protects deposits in the event of failure helps Canadians find that balance by helping them make informed choices about their savings. And that's why raising awareness about deposit insurance is so important. We therefore continue to conduct year-round public awareness campaigns aimed at ensuring that all Canadians know about protect deposit protection and if their own savings are insured. This supports financial stability. You may have seen our new ads recently, and we invite you to visit our website to learn more. 
Delivering on all of these priorities depends on a top performing organization. And that is why organizational resilience is a strategic priority itself. Enhancing our cybersecurity, adapting our systems, technology, operations, and investing in the skills of our people provide solid foundations. But we also focus on nurturing a vibrant, supportive, and inclusive culture so that everyone at CDIC can flourish and reach their potential. This year, we delivered our first diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy and corresponding programming established an inclusion advisory panel and built up our wellness programs. We also improved workplace policies, including against harassment and violence. When our people feel safe and supported, we can truly do remarkable things. And this allows everyone to bring their true selves to work. And in this way, we're able to put Canadians first in everything that we do. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. It's now time for the question and answer period. So if you have a question, please send it in writing by using the ask a question, by using the ask a question box on the right side of your screen. Um, so just to get the ball rolling, Leah, what I would like to do is talk a little bit more about consumer disclosure that you mentioned in your opening remarks and, um, you know, understanding a little bit more why it's, it is so important. Thank you, Mark. Well, it is really important, as I mentioned, that consumers know what is insured and what is not. People work very hard for their savings, and when they know what is protected, this provides peace of mind, but it also provides financial security. And I, I did want to just reinforce as well that disclosure and public awareness really does support financial stability. Recently, the Nobel Prize in Economics was awarded to Bernanke, Diamond, and Divvig uh, for their work uh, in a related area. And that what their work highlighted was really the, the value and importance of deposit insurance to financial stability, but also their macroeconomy. And it underlines that these benefits are brought when people understand it and as well when they trust that their savings are safe. And this is where disclosure and public awareness are, are really key. Thank you, Leah. A question for you, Bob. As you know, uh, ESG is top of mind for many Canadians. So can you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what CDIC is doing about the uh, ESG? Certainly, Mark. And it's important to remember that CDIC is a public purpose corporation. So when I think of ESG, I actually change it around to be SGE because our purpose of serving Canadians to ensure that their deposits are protected is vital. And to do that properly, we need to have an organization that is representative and inclusive of all of Canadians. If we as an organization are to understand the challenges and the issues that everyday Canadians face, it's important that we have the appropriate representation within our ranks so that this is able to be fulfilled in a seamless and effective manner. We work hard at serving Canadians and our codes of conduct and corporate values speak to this in volumes. And of course, we are also working hard to report at this year's year end on the disclosures required under the Task Force for Financial Disclosure for Environmental Matters. Thank you, Bob. So again, a reminder, if you have a question, please use the Ask a Question box on the right uh, side of your screen. Uh, perhaps, Leah, another question for you. Uh, you mentioned in your opening remarks, again, the review of the funding and premium framework. So can you uh, expand a little bit on the objectives behind those uh, reviews? Thanks, Mark. I mean, it's uh, threefold primarily. Uh, first, a robust funding model, and that really helps support our preparedness so that we have the resources to execute resolution when required. Secondly, a transparent, fair, and predictable premium framework for members. And by fair, as the third point, it really means being risk-based. And that's the foundation of our differential premium system proposals and recommendations. 
And I would flag two, two issues on that front. One is we have improved metrics that uh, better reflect supervisory and regulatory developments. And secondly, uh, really increased our, uh, strengthened our risk sensitivity to support uh, the differentiation among risk of members. And as an example of that, we've increased the number of categories of risk uh, in, the, in the framework that allows for that differentiation. Thank you, Leah, and, take, and thank you, Bob. So we have uh, no further questions in, in the chat. So, um, alors, c'est ainsi que va prendre fin notre assemblée. So this concludes our 2022 annual public meeting, meeting. Thank you to all who joined us this afternoon and to everyone who uh, submitted their questions. Public meeting. As a quick reminder, we will be posting the answers to the question along with the recording of the annual public meeting to our website in the next few days. For regular updates and information, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. On a final note, if you could take a moment to fill out a short survey that will appear on your screen once the broadcast ends, it would be much appreciated. Your feedback is important and will help us prepare for future events. Encore une fois, merci à vous tous d'être Again, I would like to thank you again for taking the time to join us this afternoon for this uh, 2022 annual public meeting. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful end of day.